It is a big day, guys. We are going to be changing both front shocks on this 2008 ML320 CDI. An infamously bad job. It just sucks. If you've never done it before, I mean, it involves, you know, taking a, a five foot long crowbar onto the lower control arm and stepping on it with your feet to get the shock over the axle to get it out. I've done this job. This is going to be the fourth time now on this vehicle. Reason for that is uh, when we first bought this thing, the original Saks or Bilsteins, I'm not sure what's OEM on this car, but uh, but the original uh, shocks were totally worn out, so we went with Chinese Saks shocks. Now, I had good luck with Saks shocks on my E-Class. Uh, it was a, a white E-Class, not the famous 400 and plus thousand mile black CDI, but different one. They lasted several years and then started to get a little bit of a clunking sound in them, um, but they were less than half the price of Saks or Bilsteins. And the, the ride quality was actually really good, comparable with uh, Bilstein B7s. So decided to go that route with this thing, and horrible, horrible mistake. First of all, taking the shocks out of this thing is 10 times worse than taking them out of the E-Class, the W211. And the main problem with that is because this is front-wheel drive, you have to take the clevis part of the shock on the bottom, and you have to push the lower control arm and drive shaft way down in order to get that shock over the top of it. The first time you do it, it's just a complete pain in the ass. After the, you know, the first time you get a little bit more of a hang of it, you can do each side in about an hour. But to save any of you guys the hassle that wants to do this DIY, I'm going to show you from start to finish, from taking the wheel off to putting it back on again, uh, what's all involved in this job. Uh, and again, this is a 2008 ML320 CDI, the W164 chassis. I also made this... This is a way beefed up version of one of the uh, hot selling um, spring compressors on eBay. Problem is, it is not suitable stock uh, for this vehicle. This thing has some seriously beefy uh, springs on it and couldn't handle it. So, so I way beefed up the original design and went with a thicker uh, main tube on it, bigger jack. Um, beefed up the entire thing and then supported the front of this thing with uh, both this clamping mechanism, which pulls this together to keep it from sliding out as well as uh, these chains here to hold the front of it down so this thing is seriously beefed up now i'll do another video on this thing in the future this thing is beefy as hell but anyways back to the ml to start by taking both the front wheels off digging a little bit into the shocks i'm just going to time lapse that until i point out important information so here we go All right, let's go over what bolts to take out and what sizes. First things first to take off is going to be this nut here for your sway bar linkage. That is 21 millimeters. Right, and heading down here, we have your uh, tie rod linkage here. This uh, is a 22 millimeter nut. Take this off, pop this down. You will either need to use a ball joint separator uh, or what I recommend over a ball joint separator is just to back this nut off over the edge bolt part of the uh, ball joint, back it off so that none of the threads are exposed, and then whack the end of this nut with a hammer, and it'll knock this thing out of here. I used like a 10 pound hammer, knocked it out of there. Next thing, probably going to be uh, the bolt down there that holds the yoke of the shock onto the lower control arm. Those are whatever the heck the metric equivalent of 15 sixteenths is. Uh, I don't know. I don't have it here with me, but the 15 16 fits over that perfectly. So on both sides, both the nut and the uh, bolt head on this side as well. Um, so 15 16 for that. Uh, moving up here to this uh, upper control arm, the nut that holds the ball joint on, that is going to be 21 millimeters. Again, what I recommend is to back this off of here until none of these threads are exposed. Whack the end of it with a hammer and it'll knock this thing up. Next would be the three bolts that are up there that hold the uh, the shock mount onto the shock tower. I'm not gonna show you those now. I'll get to them when the time comes in the disassembly phase. Those are pretty straightforward, 13 millimeter. And last, but certainly the hardest thing to remove is this, uh, this axle nut right here. I'm not sure offhand what the size of this is. I'll go ahead and I'll show, I'll show it up here. That, you either need a big long breaker bar with like a pipe extension to take that off or a, a, you know, a, a really strong half inch or three quarter inch impact, air impact, to take this off. This thing is one of these uh, metal uh, locking nuts where the, uh, the end of it is kind of squished in, pressed in, and it's meant to bear down on the threads in order to keep it from, uh, keep it from backing off. 
So I ended up using a uh, just a half inch Ingersoll Rand, you know, the shortest possible possible extensions on this thing in order to get this nut off. That's pretty much it for bolts that need to be removed. I've I've gone ahead and removed both of these zip ties here. You're gonna have to cut them if they're original. I replaced these a while ago with reusable zip ties that have a, a release on them. I'll show you right here. They have a release on them right there. Of course, my camera doesn't want to focus, but anyway, um, this one and then the one on the back side of the shock here which uh, holds this thing on here. So once this is off here, removing both this and this, or at least you know partially pushing it out of the way, aids a ton in, uh, in room for moving the shock around here. After all those bolts are out, I'll show you in the, in the disassembly phase, but what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna be jamming a long crowbar down into here or pipe or something, and then prying down on it. And that is going to allow you to uh, push this entire steering knuckle and axle, everything down, which will then allow you to uh, to lift this the yoke of this uh, shock here up and over the axle. If that doesn't sound easy, that's because you're correct. <laughs> this is not an easy job. Um, and I highly recommend using two people, one person for uh, fishing the shock up and over the axle and the other one for pushing down. Um, probably stepping on the crowbar or pipe that you're using to pry against that. I did do it by myself, so it is doable as, as a one-person job, but it's not easy, let me tell you. Let's go ahead and uh, move on to disassembly this. All right, I've gotten everything loose that needs to get loose except these uh, top three uh, bolts up here for the shock tower. Um, a couple things to go over that I did in time lapse that I want to explain further. Um, this nut right here, you're going to need to put some stank on that thing with a sledgehammer or something. It came out easier for me because this is actually the third time I've removed this nut in like the last six months. So uh, came out a little easier for me but you're gonna definitely want to back this nut out to where it has enough threads on it that it's not gonna you know, strip your threads, but enough so it's sticking out of the end just a little bit. And then just whack the snot out of that thing with a sludge hammer. Uh, that's the only way that axle is gonna pop out of there. Once it starts to move, uh, you know, just kinda nurse it even more. What you wanna do is uh, when you're ready to finally pop the axle slightly out, you don't wanna remove it completely. You only wanna remove it uh, so that it gives a little bit more room for travel for this whole assembly to move down. So put your nut back on here with maybe two or three threads and then let it pop all the way back till it stops. Uh, that'll be just about the perfect position for the axle for pulling the, uh, for pulling the shock out. When removing these nuts for the shock tower, uh, we're going to remove two and then leave one in. Uh, and I'll explain that right now. If you're going to, and for this side, which is the driver's side, you're gonna wanna move this shock over here because that is the, the, the open, the most open area to remove it. We have your brake lines and wires and everything over here, um, as well as the tie rod end over here. So we're gonna pick this up and we're gonna move it over here to drop it out. So when removing the nuts on the top, we're going to want to remove this one this one, and then loosen this one until it's almost off of here, but leave it intact. The reason for that is when swinging the shock over this way, we want these to pull through the shock tower, and we want this one to stay in to prevent it from falling all the way down, because uh, I'm gonna be doing this myself. So this heavy coil over here, I don't want this thing to overpower me, so I'm going to keep one of those nuts in place until it's over uh, the uh, axle there. So let's get to that. Once the shock is over the axle, uh, the last step is to remove that last nut up here. Um, I'm gonna do that off camera. Uh, I need two hands to do it, so I'm gonna do it off camera. All right, I've got the shock on the spring compressor now. I'm gonna go ahead and swap the old Chinese shock out to the new Bilstein shock. Um, I'm not gonna show this on camera. I plan on having that be footage for a review video of this spring compressor. So if you wanna see that footage, 
go ahead and keep an eye out for that video. Uh, should be uploaded probably a week after this one. So on to reassembly. All right, once you have the bolt in down there for the strut clevis uh, and the nut on the other side, as well as the bolts on the top side, go ahead and put those in as well. Once that's all done, the next step is we're gonna try and reconnect the top of this steering knuckle to the upper control arm. To do that, we're gonna need a jack. Sorry for the steam in front of the camera, it's freezing out here. And working in the cold presents a whole new set of challenges. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and jack up you're gonna jack up from the bottom of the uh, steering knuckle here under the ball joint, the lower ball joint. And then you're gonna to wanna to feed this top into there and then put a, put a nut on it. It's definitely a two-handed job. You definitely need quite a bit of strength to pull down on this while simultaneously threading the nut on the bottom. Not the easiest thing in the world, but it is doable, especially as, uh, as one person. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> 